the rapid advance of ISIS militants within Iraq and Syria is an immediate threat to these countries in the region. No one should be under any delusion about what will happen if the U.S. sits this one out. If unchecked, the ISIS threat will grow and become even more difficult to address down the road. We're sort of in a damned if you do, damned if you don't situation. I've always said that our country needed a comprehensive plan, policy, and strategy to defeat the radical Islamists terrorizing Iraq and Syria. Certainly ISIS represents the antithesis of American ideals, and they have gruesomely demonstrated their disgust for our nation with the beheadings of two American journalists in recent weeks. What we are considering today is a partial plan. It is immoral to use the prospect of a government shutdown to pressure members to vote for involvement in a war, much less a civil war on the other side of the globe. The one thing I will not support is arming the so-called moderate opposition force, the Free Syrian Army. It's a ragtag collection of 100 disparate groups that, just a little more than a month ago, the president stated that the notion that arming the rebels comprised of pharmacists, doctors, and farmers would make a difference has, quote, always been a fantasy, end quote. A threat that has been ignored for too long must no longer be tolerated. I know that many of us in this chamber from both sides of the aisle believe that the president's strategy should do more to eradicate those extremists from the earth. But despite those reservations, reservations that I share, we must support this amendment and take this first step towards a comprehensive strategy to combat these brutal terrorists. What is our end game? What is our long-term strategy? What will this ultimately cost? What are the unintended consequences that may come about? Will we follow this with boots on the ground? When it comes to ISIL operations in the Middle East, those very same operations that threaten our allies, we must ask why we do not see these threatened countries offering troops on the ground. Why are we more interested in their defense than they are? This is a plan that is destined to fail for the sake of saying we did something. The United States has spent billions of dollars in Iraq to train and equip Iraqi soldiers. First time they come in contact with the uh, ISIS members, they cut and ran. This is ISIS propaganda that was on the internet. This is American tank now in the possession of ISIS when the Iraqis cut and ran. Now we want to arm Syrian rebels to keep them uh, fighting for America. Well, let's see how that's worked in the past. We are not facing a limited engagement, but a new war that will only escalate. We are setting out on a path to send our own troops to the ground. This is an amendment and a debate to start yet another war in the Middle East with very uncertain future. I think people can you know, legitimately say, is this really going to turn the tide of the war? Is this really going to defeat um, ISIL and give us success? This alone, absolutely not. But what it does is it gives us a chance. Because if ISIL is allowed free reign in Syria, if they are not confronted by anybody but Assad, then we have no chance of defeating them. Voting against this request would send a terrible message that America is unwilling to stand with those who are already fighting a common enemy and confirm the views of many in the region that America is but a paper tiger. On this vote, the yeas are 319, the nays are 108. The joint resolution is passed.